Uh, wrestling icon, the Blue Meanie. Now, uh, can you tell us, the fans of uh, pro wrestling, how you got into the wrestling business? I was fortunate enough uh, when I was 20 years old to train with Al Snow in Lima, Ohio. I got to ask you this question. I've been, you know, I was at the old arena shows and the ECW shows, and um, what was it like? Get, first getting over with the the head gimmick and everything because that was that I was there man that was nuts. Uh, I was it was uh, it was such an awesome time an awesome memory and uh, you know uh, I think think uh, for the grace of God and ECW fans and the plastic head if it wasn't for that I wouldn't have a career so it was something else just I remember Paul E was they were giving out the heads before the show and yeah. I had one for like twenty years after it was crazy yeah. Um, so about the match with Shane Douglas at the pay-per-view, um, I know you were saying earlier that it was a Paul E. Swerve. Um, it just seemed like it could have went such a different way, and I don't know. It was, just, it was such a shock. You, you, know? Try, you know, you try things, and, uh, you know, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Yeah. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> time will tell. You know, it, I, a lot of people said that they felt that like people expected and wanted me to win the title and when it didn't happen they were like turned off like they were disappointed um you know but there there may be just as many that thought that was the it was wow you know i never thought that would happen you know yeah never expected that so you never know yeah it almost kind of reminded me of when they turned fonzie on taz because they were like a perfect match mm -hmm. and i just never knew why some they did certain things they did yeah um you, you were hotter than hot at that time man i mean I, I never saw anybody get that over that fast uh it wasn't fast it took a while okay but um but i was i was really happy with uh how things were going i was i was loving life it was great experience in smoky mountain wrestling and in ecw I loved uh, both. They were both unique and different from each other. Smoky Mountain Wrestling, you know, I love Jim Cornette dearly and uh, got the opportunity to work with Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson, which was priceless. And, you know, ECW, Paul Heyman was fantastic. And, and I got the opportunity to work with Shane Douglas on a regular basis, who I, I admire, and Taz and Sabu and, you know, Rob, all the guys. It was, you know, completely unique and different from each other, but both great. It's... Um I mean, the only person I really had some real history with would have, would have been Ken Shamrock. Uh, Al was not, I'm not sure, was Al working at that same time for the WWF? I believe so, yeah. Okay, again, I just, I don't remember it just because of the number of years back, but it's, it's, um, professional wrestling is a very politically based career. Mm -hmm. And I have no future in politics. Okay. As I used to tell Jim Cornette, I'm an ass kicker, not an ass kisser. So, you know, if people want my opinion, oh, I'll give it to you, blunt, raw, rub your face right into it, because I, I look at things, doing things on a very intellectual, intelligent side, and there's sometimes I've been involved in scenarios in professional wrestling that don't have any rhyme or reason to it. Now, uh, your character was mainly portrayed as a heel when you were in uh, WWE. Now, what, what did you think about being a heel? You know, I, I really don't think it was portrayed as a heel. It's kind of like even when I go out here tonight, I'm not. I'm, I'm really more or less viewed as, as that serious competitor. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I come out there and basically the same type of garb that I wore in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just you know, black trunks and usually black boots of some sorts. Uh, a sweaty gray t-shirt. See, a lot of people always say, well, why do you always wear a t-shirt? I go, obviously, you were, you were never involved in collegiate athletics. In collegiate athletics, you are issued a set of grays. And I used to rate my workouts by how many sweaty shirts I finished out a practice with. Standard is two. On a really good day, three. And I'm not talking just a little bit. I'm talking about saturation that you can ring it on out. Amateur wrestling classes, and give me like amateur wrestling practices, I would typically lose anywhere between 8 and 12 pounds in a two to two and a half hour workout. Now, you think about that, that's a lot of body weight to be losing, and I'm drinking still. I trained Hawk and I and Smashing Demolition and Scott Norton with the NWO. So, yeah, man. Okay. That's badass Billy Gunn right What's there. Up, What's up, Billy? I just wanted to get in this. Nice, man. 
I like doing stuff with Joe. Me and him are yeah, the chemistry. That's right. We always have back when we work together, and I beat the shit out of him. Yeah. Nice. That's he, a lie. That is really a good, he that's really a great good. lie. Look. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, um, anyways, um, what's your favorite era or time period in pro wrestling? You know, man... I, I think now is a great time in wrestling, man. You got great companies opening up, you know, between you know, Impact, Ring of Honor, WWE, and now uh, All Elite. Are you kidding me? All Elite's killing it right now. Bro, AEW's killing it. You know, and hey, Georgia? I'm very good. I'm very cold here, but I'm very good. Thank you. Now, you came all the way up here from Tampa, Florida, too. How do you feel about that? Uh, temperature shocked. I think my blood's gotten, uh, or my skin's gotten thinner or something. But, um, yeah, I'm definitely not used to this cold weather. But I'm, I'm really liking it here in Philadelphia. And I'm at the original ECW arena, which is super cool. And I'm seeing my brother, uh, Harry Smith, and my cousin, Teddy Hart, and Brian Pillman Jr. wrestle tonight, which I'm really looking forward to. So, all around excited. <laughs> okay, now, can you tell me, what was it like uh, growing up uh, with um, the British Bulldog, anyways? It was pretty cool. I had a really awesome childhood. Um, yeah, lots of uh, trips to wrestling shows. Um, kids didn't believe that my dad was the British Bulldog until the, he would pull up in the car and pick me up, and they'd be like, oh, my God, that's your dad. But um, as well, I didn't really get to see my dad that much. Um, so there was some really good highs and some lows with it. But overall, um, I... I couldn't have picked... Uh, Yo, this is the Fence Man here with this week's Top Rope TV Fence Man exclusive. I'm here with uh, Molly Holly. Hi, thanks for having me. Okay, now Molly, this is an awesome seminar, by the way, and uh, thank you for coming up here, and thanks uh, to Joey Bellini with uh, Warriors of Wrestling for having her. Now, um, first off, uh, what is it like? what was it like working for uh, WCW and uh, the Team Madness angle with uh, Macho Man and Medusa? Well, it was a great experience for me to go from the indies, you know, working in front of 20 people to be on Nitro during the hottest time when wrestling, you know, the Monday Night Wars were happening. And so for me, it was awesome to be with the people that I used to watch on television as a child, to be in the ring with them. I mean, it was it was surreal um, to actually be a part of, of that experience. I, I loved it. It was definitely one of the highlights just to go from minor leagues to You're with being in the Davey Monday Boy Night. Smith Jr. How are you doing tonight? I'm very good. Uh, it's been a long day, a little bit tired. Um, had a show for New Japan the past couple nights, flew from L.A. to North Carolina, and then MLW today, so uh, it's been a busy day. Awesome, man. Now, uh, what are some of the highlights of your career that you got? Well, I had one tonight. Uh, just won the MLW uh, Tag Team Championship, along with Teddy Hart, the New Hart Foundation. Uh, it's been a really, really awesome experience being with MLW so far, and uh, Teddy and I we're signed now to MLW exclusively, so you're going to see a lot more of the New Heart Foundation. Very good. Yo, this is the Fence Man here with the Fence Man exclusive. I'm here with David Arquette. What's up, David? I'm good. How are you, Fence Man? Doing pretty good, man. Now, how was your match tonight? It was good. Bully Ray came up at the end, though, jacked my back up, put me through a table. So it was going good, but the Sandman came in, and he, I shared a, a beer with him, and... My partner, RJ City, turned on me, I as work, usual. I work media in Tampa, Florida. I work at 933FLZ, so I do a lot of uh, media work. Um, I do uh, social media, special events. Um, I do online, or sorry, um, midday programming, and I do on-air talent work. So I do that, but, um, you know, I love to do um, on-screen interviews and be, be on screen, <laughs> um, ultimately. So MLW invited me, and be in sport. Uh, invited me here tonight to do some on-camera things, so I jumped at that opportunity to do that, and it's been really cool so far. Awesome. Now, is there anything else you'd like to talk about at all, like um, any experience you had growing up? Uh, I know you, you have, uh, you're close to Brian Pillman Jr., and uh, did you, do you know Brian Pillman Sr. at all, too? Or? Yeah, I did. I met Brian Pillman Sr. The last time I saw Brian Pillman Sr. was after the In Your House show in 1997. Do you remember the Calgary when... Yeah, I remember yeah. that one. You yeah. just remember, yeah, you might remember that. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> so uh, the last time I saw Brian Pillman Sr. was we went to my grandpa's house, the Hart House, after the show, and uh, he was holding a cat. Coincidentally, Ted's got a cat here tonight, so it's like full circle. <laughs> but um, yeah, he was holding one of my grandpa's cats, and um, 
that was the last time I saw Brian Pillman was at my grandpa's kitchen. And I just met Brian Pillman Jr. today. Actually, we were on the same flight from Atlanta. We I had a stop over in Atlanta, so we, we met. And um, it's just like, like we've always known. Your that. angle in WWE with Spike Dudley has been one of the biggest highlights of your career. What made that so? Um, well, to be a part of a storyline that fans can connect with or to look forward to like what's going to happen next, that makes the job so worth it because it's one thing to have a match where you're responsible for entertaining the fans with that, but when there's a story attached to it, it just you can draw so much more emotion out of the fans and out of yourself to really put on a good show, and so that's why I love that time with Spike. Okay. Do you have any memorable, memorable matches at all or any uh, memories or inspirations of uh, anybody else that you grew up watching in the wrestling business? Uh, I mean, working every night with the uh, FBI and ECW was a dream come true because it was a learning experience with Tracy Smothers, who's like an unsung hero in ECW. But yeah, working with uh, the FBI every night was amazing. Okay. Now, being, probably being back here in the ECW arena probably brings some, back some amazing memories, too. Now, like, is there anybody that you want to shoot on or anything, uh, anything, in, anything at all in wrestling today, like, you want to shoot about? Nah, man, the business is strong as ever. Uh, the independent scene is as hot as ever. Uh, everybody's doing good, so I'm happy, you know. Uh, the business is good. Everybody's doing good, so... Uh, you know, back, you know, the, the indies used to go the way, if WWE was good, then the indies were good, but the indies are thriving on their own, so I'm, I'm happy. The independent Jesus wrestling. This guy's good. coming in, he's making this money, he's cashing residual checks. I didn't sell one fucking shit. I had to go into business for myself, you know what I mean? A little bit. My, I apologize to you before I did it, well, maybe so it's a courtesy. Shirts, I would I mean, love to sell something. Did you bring any shirts? I brought a couple. A I don't couple? know where they are right now, but I have a couple. Where are your photos? Where's your agent? Where's your manager? Where's the big entourage, the David entourage? You're wearing a Ted DiBiase shirt. Is it bootleg? I don't even know. What are these, kids? I, I don't know what to do. And then somehow, we won. Riddle me that. We did. When the WWF became WWE, you uh, underwent a huge transformation, not just gimmick, but uh, look as well. What uh, was it brought on by changes in WWE that uh, that you began to think it was time for something different? Um, well, they just needed a heel, and um, so they just told me to be a heel, and then they didn't really know what kind. And Ivory was super popular with the right to censor, so I was just kind of like a knockoff version of the Ivory's right to censor type of gimmick as a heel and you know it worked for me it was okay I mean I didn't I didn't really enjoy being a heel but um, the transformation was just because Jazz had hurt her knee and they needed um, they needed a heel and so they just asked me if I would do it and, and I did. Abdullah the Butcher how are you doing today Abdullah? Very good sir. It's a pleasure to have you on the show and um, and it's a pleasure to have someone uh, from the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, can you tell the wrestling fans? Wait, how wait a minute. You have a lot of good wrestlers here. You got a lot of top wrestlers, top guys, big guys. Okay. In the wrestling business, you got it's got to be like a carnival or a circus. Mm -hmm. You can't have the same guys with muscles and stuff. You understand? Okay. And if you ask, if you ask uh, Bobby Fulton, he will tell you, Stan Hansen. Okay. They got some good, big guys here working. Okay. And they're and they're professionals. Mm -hmm. You could take all these guys here to Tokyo, San Juan, Puerto Rico, all over Australia and everything, mm -hmm. and they could draw a lot of money. Okay. Yep. Right, now, how'd you get your start in the wrestling business, anyways? How did I get my start? I was teaching uh, a karate for uh, Bert Ruby, and uh, Jack Britton was the main one who got me into the business. Okay. Him and Gino Brito. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Now, do you have any uh, inspirations that got you into the business at all? Well, I, I, I knew this guy. Um, I, sh I don't want to say it, but Bobby Fulton, you know what I mean? We've been friends for many, many, many years. And uh, I used to look at him wrestle and stuff like that, and I liked the way he wrestled. He had a partner and stuff like that. He's been to Japan with me many times. And now, Do you have any memories backstage at all? Uh... Yeah, you know, um, I remember I used to uh, play backstage with all the guys. Bam Bam Bigelow, he taught me how to use a yo-yo, uh, which I can sort of can sort of do now. 
Um, I was always good friends with the Nasty Boys, still am. Okay. Uh, of course, you know, my uncle Brett and Owen, uh, Bart Gunn, Steve Blackman, they were good friends of my father's too, and uh, I got to know them. Uh, it was an honor to be a WCW champion, and I'm in the record books. RJ, people like RJ are always very jealous, but you can't turn back the clocks of time and... The clock of time? I don't Sands know. Of time. Yeah. He's a very eloquent partner. It's so funny, he's the actor, yet I'm the one cutting the promos, too. I'm really propping it up in all corners here. Get the fork! It's in your jacket! Get your fork! I'll stab him! I'll get your fork! Oh!